From a Wonder Woman cameo to a sad moment regarding the absence of Superman, Shazam! Fury of the Gods was full of Easter eggs, references, and hidden details, which I'm pretty sure you missed. Let's take a look at a few of them, shall we? Starting with the Doctor's Toys. It only makes sense that we start with the opening scenes. As Billy participated in a therapy session with his doctor, pediatrician if you may, many fans saw the cursed Annabelle doll from the Conjuring universe on a child's table in his workplace. This was unmistakably a reference to the previous movie starring the same doll, Annabelle. Plush dolls of characters like Wonder Woman, Batman, Robin, and Green Lantern were also there because, duh, it's DC. Other than that, there was a portrait of Starro, which was rather odd considering that he slaughtered and brainwashed several people. Interesting, right? Another Easter egg was Lotta Lawson's cameo. Lotta Lawson, the film director David Sandberg's wife, has a fleeting appearance as the woman that Shazam saves from falling off a bridge. In addition, she is well known for portraying the lead in several of Sandberg's short horror movies. Not just that, she also portrayed Dr. Lin, the character in the first Shazam movie who disintegrates after touching a magical door. It's very obvious at this point that Sandberg enjoys putting his wife in tense situations for the camera. But moving on to more details, let's discuss the burning violin. Constantly burning, it's among the strangest relics discovered in the Rock of Eternity. This legendary artifact makes a cameo appearance in the follow-up, where it also serves as fuel for several jokes and a decoy for tricking the Daughters of Atlas. Some comic book readers might know it's a passing reference to the villain Ogar's enchantment of Nero's violin in Captain Marvel Adventures number 64, something that nearly reduced New York City to ashes. It was honestly a nice touch. Anyway, coming to Pedro's book report, Billy's foster brother, Pedro, is shown in the first movie tossing out an exam that has been marked with a failing grade, indicating that he's struggling academically. Although there aren't many references to this subplot after that, the sequel does bring it up when it's revealed that Pedro's book reports have been covertly written by Steve, a sentient pen owned by the Shazam family. I got it. Uh, I, I, well, now my superpowers are failing me and I am very confused. Yeah. Now, the one that connects Shazam to its roots. It's time we talk about the superhero's real name. Billy still doesn't know the name of his heroic persona in his second movie. Billy is affectionately referred to as Captain Marvel by a spectator later in the movie, despite the fact that he and his squad are known as the Philadelphia Fiascos by the local media. Many fans are aware that this was the character's first name in the comics, before he was involved in a legal dispute over another character with the same name in Marvel Comics. Interesting. Interestingly, Michael Gray, who portrayed Billy Batson in the Shazam Isis Hour, played the individual who refers to Shazam by his real name. The next one is an Easter egg about the Fast and the Furious. Yep, you heard that right. Billy claims that he has the advantage in their heavenly struggle since he has the backing of his family when he meets Hespera. He also mentions that he has seen every Fast and the Furious movie. Although it's well known that this series of action movies places a strong emphasis on the family to the point of popular mockery. This line of speech might also be a playful allusion to Helen Mirren's character Magdalene Shaw in the franchise. Ahem. Anyway, coming towards the Cyclops. With the entrance of the mythological creature who's born from the Tree of Life, when Calypso plants it in Philadelphia, this superhero movie plays tribute to classic cinema. The design of this creature is very similar to the Cyclops from Ray Harryhausen's The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Ray Harryhausen's stop-motion animation work also served as a precursor to later CGI blockbusters like Fury of the Gods. Now for the Man in Black. Billy Crimson's super suit burns so badly throughout the third act of the movie that it almost totally turns black. This outfit probably pays homage to Black Adam, Billy's predecessor, who recently made his DCEU debut in a movie of the same name. Billy's transition into the fabled Shazam champion, although one with a much purer heart, looks to be complete given how much he now resembles him as they combat Calypso. Next one just straight up rocks. I'm referring to the one concerning the Justice Society. Hey, look, I'm late for work already, all right? We don't need any magazines or whatever. Oh, I'm, I'm not. 
probably don't recognize me, but... The mid credit sequence of the movie involves the unexpected comeback of John Economos and Emilia Harcourt. Shazam is seen being invited by the pair to join the Justice Society of America, which they first introduced to the DC Extended Universe in Black Adam. Did they... Did they just set up the Black Adam versus Shazam thing? Shazam accepted the offer right away, but only because he assumed that they were referring to the Justice League. The protagonist then launches into a protracted tirade in which he questions why both teams have names that are so close to one another, and offers some alternate names using an internet thesaurus. Shazam offers his favorite suggestion, the Avengers Society. Hmm, interesting. I wonder why, huh? Anyway, talking about Justice League, Wonder Woman's cameo was one good thing. Warner Brothers decided to put Wonder Woman's cameo in last-minute TV ads, perhaps to generate more interest in the movie on the eve of its release. There are some significant Shazam spoilers out there right now, which made director David F. Sandberg unhappy. He said that people should avoid being online or watching commercial-filled television if they want to start fresh. He also tweeted that he was happy with it if it motivated others to see the movie. Never Nevertheless, he added that if they get a chance to read spoilers, the movie was obviously going to be less desirable for those people. The fact that Wonder Woman seemed to emerge in an earlier scene that turned out to be a dream, only to truly appear near the film's conclusion, is a pity that this one did get spoiled. Have a good first day, big brother. Look, you don't have to hug me all the time. We're not actually brother and sister, so... I'm sorry. The movie does a superb job of throwing you off, though. While I'm discussing cameos, let's talk about a kind of cameo. Dr. Thaddeus Sivana, who is undoubtedly a significant Shazam villain in the novels, had a brief appearance in the first movie, in which Mark Strong played the adversary. He appears in Fury of the Gods, but regrettably only in a flashback to the conclusion of the first movie. It's unfortunate since they teamed together to conquer the Seven Realms in a later movie. After encountering the evil alien Caterpillar, pillar, Mr. Mine, in the film's mid credit sequence. But with a threequel movie almost looking impossible at the moment, it's likely that this is the last time we'll see Strong as Sivana. But anyway, is a comic book movie still a comic book movie if it doesn't have too many Easter eggs in it? Shazam 2, with its abundance of references to the larger DC universe, most definitely meets the description, even with the references that only made the fans sad. Yeah, I'm talking about Henry Cavill not being there, as Freddy takes Anne who's his new crush, to the table in the school canteen, where he first encountered Superman at the conclusion of the first movie, a character whose face we didn't see. This reference makes a reference to the future rather than the past, as DC is continuously being bullied to bring the actor back. Anyway, Freddy describes to Anne in detail how he met Superman. Oh man, why did I get sad at the end? Who knows? Maybe he does surprise us again as he did in Black Adam. Okay. What are you doing? So there you have it. That was all for the Easter eggs and references in Shazam Fury of the Gods.